In this lesson, we're going to learn how to create a UI for our main menu. All right, so with Stingray, you have Scale Form available to you. To access Scale Form, we'll go up to Window, and then under External Apps, you'll see Scale Form Studio. Give it just a moment for that to come up. And when it does, you'll see that we have several parts to this interface. And what we're going to do is I'm going to break those down um, in just kind of a, a workflow sort of fashion, just like we did with the audio. So I'm not going to go over everything here, but we'll touch quite a bit of the interface. So first thing is first, um, here on the left side we have our Assets tab. And this is where we can import all of the assets that we want to use in our project. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, one quick note. Um, if you don't see the interface like this, simply go up to Window and Reset to Default. So let's click on Import and let's go to Project Files, Assets, UI, and then grab all four of these assets and open. It will bring all four of those into the scene and now all we have to do is simply drag those onto our canvas. Now if you zoom out using the mouse wheel, you'll see the size of your canvas here. The size of this canvas can be set by going to the Project tab down here. If you wanted to make sure that your UI could scale um, up, maybe to a larger size, it would probably be best to set your stage width and your height to that. So I'm going to go ahead and say 1920 by 1080. Oops. The frames per second for my project is going to be 30 frames per second, and that's perfectly fine. Let's go ahead and go to our Explorer again, and you'll see that the canvas size has changed a little bit, and that's fine. Let's start dragging in our assets. So I'm going to bring in this main menu sky, and you'll see that it's pretty large. I'm going to go ahead and type in a value of 960 and 540. Let's go ahead and add in the, the buildings here, and I'm going to type in those same values. Now just to make sure that we're keeping up with organization, what we want to do is we want to make sure that we're renaming these objects as we bring them in. Now they are named properly here in your project, but they come in as separate um, instances of that and they'll have different names. So let's right click on actor underscore eight. Now it might be a little bit different for you, uh, but this is going to be the buildings. So let's type in buildings, hit enter, and let's right click on this one, rename it, and let's call that sky. Now we'll also bring in the beams. We're going to drag and drop that in. Let's give it a value of 960 on the X. And let me make sure that's correct. And then 540 on the Y. And now one problem that I have with the beams is that it's over the top of the buildings. I want it to be under the buildings. So after we rename it to beams, let's drag beams underneath building. And you'll see that that has changed the order of the layers. Now finally, we're going to bring in the cat food logo, and we're going to place that right in the center. So we're going to say 960 by 540. All right, so now we have this set up. Let's talk about how to add a little bit of animation to make our main menu a little bit prettier. So under the timeline, let's go to beams, and let's go out 240 frames because I want plenty of time for my beams to rotate. So out at frame 240, I'm going to right click on it and I'm going to say insert frames. Now as I insert the frames, you'll see that the rest of it has disappeared. Only my beams are showing. We need to make sure that we have active frames for the other objects as well. Let's make sure that we rename that to logo. So what I want to do is I'm going to left click and I'm going to drag on frame 240 all the way down. You'll see that logo, buildings, beams, and sky are all highlighted. You can right click and you could insert frames. Now because we already had those frames created for beams, you'll get one extra frame. Go ahead and select that on 241 and then right click and delete frames. All right, perfect. So now we have enough here. Now in order to store transform information for animation, we need to create what's called a keyframe. 
So on beams, on frame 240, right click and insert keyframe. Now it won't create an extra frame on that, it just basically adds the keyframe on top of any existing frames we currently have. So now what I want to do is I want to change the value of this keyframe. So with it selected, come over here to your rotate on the Z axis and type in 360. And so I'm going to rotate that 360 degrees. And as you move your time slider, you'll notice that nothing is happening. And that's because there are no in-between frames. So in order to create in-between frames, you need to have the layer selected. And then you need to come out and select a frame out in the middle between the two keyframes at the beginning and at the end. And you'll come over and you'll add a transition. And so what I want to do is I want to add a linear transition. And so you'll see that that has shifted a little bit. And as we begin to slide this, you'll see that the beams in the background are now, now rotating 360 degrees over 240 frames. So what I want to do now is I want to be able to preview that and make sure that it's working correctly. So let's save our project. Let's go to File, and let's save Project As. And I'm going to go to Project Files, Scale Form Files, and then I'll create my project. So I'm going to call this main underscore menu and then hit save. With that project saved, I can now go to run and then run project. It's going to come up as a separate window here and you'll see that that is animating in the background and it's looking perfect. Let's go ahead and close that down. And now what I want to do is I want to create some buttons. So buttons are uh, can be created a couple of different ways, but the easiest way to do it is to create it from what's called a widget. Now, under the widgets tab, you have several different templates for widgets that you can bring in, and you can explore those on your own time. But what I want to do is I want to bring in this button here. Now, notice the name that it's being given. You can set up some preliminary information about this object. So for this one, I'm going to call this Start Button. And then I'm going to give it a size of 300 by 100. I'm going to make sure that auto script is turned on because what that will do is it will create my scripts um, for me automatically. And so we'll have some functionality with this button already set up. And so uh, Scaleform is going to do a lot of the work for us. So once we have that, we just simply left click and drag that into the scene. And you'll see that it has created that button based on the information that we gave it. So let's select Start Button, and we can come in and we can begin to modify some of this information here. So if you didn't set up a, the size the way that I did, and you dragged it in first, you can always set up the size here. All right, so now that I have my button in my scene, uh, what I want to do now is I want to begin setting up the look of that button. Now, the look of the button is going to be derived from its components. So let's go ahead and expand the Start button in our Explorer. You'll notice that there are two parts to a button. There's a background and there's a label. The background is going to be the image that you see here, and then the label is going to be the button uh, text itself. So let's go to Background, and on the background I'm going to switch th from uh, the effects from None to Normal, so that way it appears exactly the way that I have set it up. If you set it to something like multiply, you'll see that it multiplies against the background. So let's go to normal. We're going to set up a style. The style that I want is going to be tint, and this is going to allow me to color it whatever I want. So this makes it very flexible for creation. There are some workflows to where you can create images for buttons, and that's perfectly fine, uh, but those buttons have to be created and if there's a problem with them, they have to go back into the content creation package and reset that and, and make that button all over again. But this way, we can just create buttons very quickly. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick a color uh, from my scene. So I'm going to pick screen color. And I'm going to choose a color that's up in here. Maybe just lighten it up a little bit more. And I'll hit OK. Now you'll notice here that it's not showing up as the exact color that I just chose. And the reason for that is because we're set to 50% on the alpha. Let's set it to 100 and you'll see that we get that full color. All right. So now let's go ahead and take a look at um, something else. Let's go to Label. 
and on the label this is going to be our text so the text is going to have the same uh, sort of thing the style is set to tint so let's change its color and I'm going to choose something kind of like a greenish yellow color let's make sure we saturate that quite a bit and I'm going to hit OK so it's going to look something like that maybe I want a little bit more green in there there we go so there we have our button and we have our uh, components here and under the components you'll see that we have text it's got its name there um, here's where we can change the actual uh, text itself so let's call this start and then we can come down and we can change some parameters like the size you could even set up the style for that now if you take a look at your assets uh, window again you can see that it has created some files for us automatically whenever we created that button we have a widget script and we also have uh, some some font options and then we have the handler for our script and then the actual button itself so all of this is going to go inside of your project so because we have these fonts these font options we can come in and we can change it from title we can go to normal we could also do uh, maybe open sans and you could do bold whatever you want to do here okay so I'm gonna leave it set to title the bounds of this you can see are denoted with this dotted blue line that's going to be the active area for that text and we're gonna leave the the bounds set to the size of the button so that way if you type a long string of text it will only stay inside of this area okay um, the rest of this I'm gonna go ahead and leave that up to you I mean there's really not a whole lot in there um, that's too complicated I'm, I think you can handle that and now what we want to do is we want to create another button let's say that we want it to quit uh, what we can do is we can come in and we can select this button here and we can hit control C and control V and you'll see that it creates a brand new one now what we would want to do is we would want to rename that and we'll say quit underscore button and then let's drag that down below so make it right about here so I don't want to go too far out of the way and I want to make sure that they're also lined up so I'm gonna say 825 on the the X there and do the same thing here for 825 Oops. and then there we go okay so that looks good now with that quit button I'm gonna go ahead and drag that below just to keep things consistent let's expand it let's go to label and let's change this to quit and then whenever we click off of that it will update the button alright perfect so now let's go ahead and go back to our scene we'll see our two buttons and then all we have to do now is go ahead and save this out now in the next lesson what I want to do is I want to um, start hooking things together to get this to work inside of Stingray so we need to create a little bit of functionality for the start button so that way it will load our level and then if we quit we want it to quit the application and so we'll talk about how to do that next